Are you having trouble winning games of Super Mario 35? No worries. Follow these tips and you'll start stacking up the wins faster than you can say, It's a me! Okay, that was really embarrassing. I promise never to do that again. Level 28. So let's go over the basics of Super Mario 35. Each game starts with 35 players playing the same sequence of Super Mario stages. Your goal is to be the last surviving player out of everyone in your match. You do this by gaining time by defeating enemies and grabbing power-ups, and by collecting coins to use on the item roulette wheel. The following tips will help you see better results in your matches and more wins from your games. So let's get right into our first tip, time farming. You can't be the last Mario standing without having the time to do it. Each enemy you defeat puts more time on your timer. How much time you get from each enemy depends on how you defeat them. A fireball generally gets you one second of time on your clock, but stomping on that same enemy will give you more time. If you can manage to stomp multiple enemies in succession on the same jump, you will get increasing amount of time for each stomp. This also works with enemies you defeat with a star. You also get time for collecting redundant power-ups. These are power-ups you collect when you already have their powers, like when you collect a mushroom as Big Mario, or a fire flower as Fire Mario. These power-ups give you an extra 15 seconds on the clock, so collect them when you can. This also works with items you get via the item roulette box. You also get a time bonus when you complete a level. The bonus depends on how high up the flagpole you jump. Using the warp pipe adds 10 seconds to your timer. The maximum time you can have on your timer is 400 seconds. In a good run, you'll usually reach this point, which is why it's important in the early and mid stages of a game to also focus on coin farming. Which brings us to tip 2, coin farming. All of the coins you collect throughout the stages go into your coin reserve, which allow you to purchase power-ups from the item roulette wheel for 20 coins apiece. These power-ups come in handy during difficult sequences where a huge amount of enemies fill the screen and you have nowhere safe to go. Hit the item roulette wheel by pressing X, take damage from an enemy, and during your invincible period press X again to stop the roulette wheel. You'll either get a mushroom or fire flower, which will prevent you from dying as Tiny Mario, a pow, which will clear enemies from the screen, or a star, which lets you attack enemies by running into them. Later in the game, when the timer turns red and begins to accelerate, you can use the item roulette wheel to get extra time by hitting redundant power-ups. Tip 3. The item roulette box. The item roulette box allows you to grab a power-up at any time for the cost of 20 coins. Power-ups you can get include a mushroom, a fire flower, a star, and a pow. Each of these items can be extremely valuable in the right situation. Tip 4. One-up mushrooms. You only get one life in Super Mario 35. Fall into a pit, take damage as Tiny Mario, it just takes one mistake and your game is over. So you'd think collecting 1-Up Mushrooms would be a waste, right? Wrong. 1-Up Mushrooms give you 20 coins instantly, which is basically a free turn at the item roulette wheel. Easy hidden 1-Up Mushrooms can be found here in 1-1, and here in 3-1. Don't pass these up. Tip 5. Targeting other players. In Super Mario 35, you're not just playing against the clock in Koopas and Goombas, you're also up against 34 other players all looking to defeat you. So how do you take them out? Enemies that you defeat can be sent to other players' screens for them to deal with, and vice versa. You can select specific players to send enemies to by using the left stick or the switch touch screen, or you can set your target priorities by using the right stick. Your priorities can be set to random, lowest time, most coins, or attackers. These options are pretty self-explanatory, but which one should you use? Lowest time is arguably the worst of the selections. All you end up doing is sending more enemies to the other players so they can build up their time bank. Random isn't terrible, but most coins or attackers are better. Most coins sends enemies to players with the most coins. These are usually the better players, so knocking them out early helps your chances of winning. You also get a coin bonus for players you knock out, so targeting players with high coin balances is a strong general strategy. 
attacker sends enemies to players who are sending enemies to you. This can sometimes start a feedback loop where, if the player is targeting attackers also, you can end up with waves of enemies on your screen. A well-timed star or pow can put a good chunk of time back on your clock. If there is a star coming up shortly in the stage you are in, consider switching to attackers in order to line up the enemies and mow them down. Tip 6. Keep an eye on your opponents. It's not easy to do, and definitely don't do this when you have a high pressure jump coming up. But when you are safe, take a moment to peek at the other player's screens. A quick scan will tell you if your opponents are in water levels, watch out for flying cheeps and bloops, or in Bowser Castle levels. Also, take an occasional glance down at the watch out bar at the bottom of the screen. You can see what enemies are up ahead in your stage. If you notice a piranha plant or a hammer brother on the bar coming up right before a big jump, you can plan ahead by shooting a couple of leading fireballs to clear the way. Tip 7. Land your jumps. Because of the item roulette box and abundance of power-ups, the biggest threat to ending your game is falling off the bottom of the screen. Not even a star can save you from that, and it's an instant game over. Because of this, it's important to make your jumps count. Don't go for a big gap jump unless you're absolutely sure you can make it. Make sure to play the dash three stages carefully, as they often feature long jumps, big gaps, moving platforms, and flying enemies. Tip 8. Practice the tough stages. Rather than just going for that big jump in the middle of an intense match, first go into course practice mode to see if you can make it. You can play any course you have unlocked in the game so far. Run the stage until you get a line down that you are comfortable with that you can use confidently in the middle of a game. Of course, unexpected enemies will pop up in your path, but at least you'll know which jumps you can make and which ones you have to wait for. Tip 9. Course Order the course order of a match is determined at the start screen when you select your course. Every player's selection is inserted randomly into a queue, and this is the order in which the stages are played. 1-1 is the most common starting stage, because all players have access to it, and most people select 1-1 while not really knowing what their selection means. If you have a stage that you feel gives you an advantage over other players, select that course. The courses are played in the randomly selected order, unless you happen to discover one of the warp pipes throughout the game. When this happens, you have a choice of three stages to play next. Most people think these choices are random, however, they are not. The warp pipes can give you more information than you know. From right to left, the warp pipes show which stages are in the queue if you were to skip one level, two levels, or three levels in the predetermined order. Because of this, warp pipes are basically telling you which stages are next. If you select the pipe on the far right, you know the next two stages to follow. So not only can you select which stage to play next, you can often prepare yourself mentally for the stages after that. Tip 10. The power of 1-1 and 1-2. 1-1 and 1-2 are two of the easiest stages in the game. It makes sense considering they were the first two stages in the original Super Mario Bros. game. However, they are even more important in Super Mario 35 because of the opportunities to coin and time farm, as well as create a looping mechanism where you can build your coin and time amounts to huge values. 1-2 is especially important because of the warp zone located at the end. Jumping above the exit pipe at the end of the stage brings you to the warp area. Because of the abundance of players selecting either 1-1 or 1-2, you can often use the warp pipe to loop back to either one of these stages. If you practice enough and develop a solid line through these stages, you can win a match without having to play any other stages. In a future video, I will give a detailed breakdown of my lines through 1-1 and 1-2, which provide a strong strategy for both coin and time farming. Let's talk about early and late game strategies that will help get you to a win. Early in the match, it's more important to lean towards building up your coin count than your time bank. Coins are important because you can trade them for items or time later in the stages of match, so it's important to have a line through the common stages that will allow you to coin farm effectively. As you play, try to prioritize clean, safe runs through each stage, minimizing damage taken, maximizing coins collected, and your time will increase naturally. Keep your targeting on most coins unless you find yourself running low on time, in which case switch to attackers to try to create an enemy loop. Utilize the 1-2 warp zone to choose stages you are familiar with, and play unfamiliar stages carefully. When you hit the top 5, the speed up music will start. Relax. 
you are not in any rush just yet. This is just the game letting you know that there are only 5 players left. You only need to worry about rushing when the timer turns red. Speaking of, eventually the timer will turn red and begin to count down quicker. At this point you must switch your priorities from coins to time. Stomp as many enemies as you can or use a star to build up your time. If you work fast enough, you should be able to break even or close enough. If you find yourself running low on time, start spamming X to trigger your item roulette. You'll either stack items for more time, or you'll get a star or pow which will eliminate enemies and beef up your time bank. Emphasize getting through the stages as quickly as possible to get the level completion time bonus. In the end, it all comes down to how much time you have compared to how much time your opponent has. If you've been playing well, you should be well stocked up. If they've been playing well, it might come down to a single second on the clock. But if you follow these tips, more often than not, you'll be the one who comes out on top. Don't forget to hit the like button if these tips helped you, and subscribe and click the notification button for more videos like this. Good luck out there, and we'll see you next time.